Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely lot today? Well, we're going to be having a go at painting these three pelicans sitting on a dock. So just a quick announcement. There won't be any painting tutorials for the next two weeks because I'm off to Lagomera in the Canary Islands for our painting retreat. Margot's already out there teaching. I'm going to be following on Friday. Um, I've had some surgery, so I'm just recovering. All's fine. Um, so that's why I haven't been able to reply to any of your comments or emails. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Saunders Waterford. It's 100% cotton, a rough texture, and it's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolour paper will do. My colours today are Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, French Ultramarine Blue, and of course Payne's Grey. And just three brushes from my range today, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number 6 round. So here is the beautiful photo reference which I got from Pixabay, but I just felt it was a little bit complicated for a painting, so I've cropped it in and made it into a portrait format. And here is the pencil sketch, and as always, this one is free to download from our website. Link in the description below. Okay, so a bit of planning is needed here because we have to consider how to paint the birds and the white posts in front of the background and the water. So I've decided to go for the masking fluid option, but I'm only going to be masking out the birds and the white posts up to the edge of the waterline. And I'm going to add a few dots here and there for that lovely sparkle in the water. Off we go! And with my flat brush, I'm wetting everything with clean water above the waterline. Just slosh it in. So I'm starting with a bluey grey colour made up from French Ultramarine and Payne's Grey and just literally chucking it into the corner here. And here a little bit of warmth with some burnt sienna. And all my greens today have been mixed from French Ultramarine and Cadmium Yellow and again just literally chucking it in and letting all those colours mix and blend on the paper. Just simply adding more of the ultramarine blue to get a much darker value and of course getting some splatting in. Now I can't remember if I've mentioned this already in one of my videos but someone explained to me this very well that splatting like this gives that totally random effect. For example if you threw a deck of cards onto the carpet they would land in a random way that you couldn't replicate if you laid each one down individually if that makes sense. And I thought that was quite interesting, sort of. Anyway, I'm just taking a tissue here and lifting off the paint which is laying on top of the masking fluid. Okay, so now for the water and I'm using a French Ultramarine with just a touch of paint's grey in it. And I'm going to be painting this in sections. Make sure you keep that mix nice and wet so you don't see the brush strokes. And I'm putting these ripples in while the wash is still damp. So 
So I don't like that crisp sharp edge between the water's edge and the trees above, so with a damp tissue, just smudge and blend. So now we need to let this totally dry, so it's a perfect time for a short break. And as when I'm filming this, it's still dry January, I've just got a hot chocolate. Right, next we need to take off that masking fluid and I'm just using an old rubber eraser and carefully lifting off. Right, so quite frankly those water sparkles look quite dreadful. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a really old brush that's gone gummed up with masking fluid and just clean water and softening the edges. Just making them look a little bit more natural. So I've lost some of my pencil lines when I removed the masking fluid, so I'm just sketching this little fella back in. But to paint those white posts, we are going to have to mask in a little area here on his beak and his neck. Right, so now for the posts. Now I've already painted in two either side, so with this centre one, I'm literally just dropping in some clean water using my number 12 brush and then simply dropping in wet and wet to that left hand side some Payne's Grey but there's probably some French ultramarine got in there too and let's just drop in a little bit of green moss or something growing Next, for the wooden pier here, I'm just putting a fairly watery wash of yellow oak and burnt sienna, covering it all nice and quickly using my number 12 brush. So straight into the wet wash, I'm dropping in a mix of burnt sienna and French ultramarine for this nice earthy brown colour, but to be fair, you could just use some burnt umber. And this is the same brown mix again for the deck. Okay, so now for the caps on top of the posts and I'm using my number six brush and some Payne's Grey. And I'm making sure I keep the highlights on the right hand side. So here I'm just dragging my brush quickly on its side to pick up some dry brush texture to suggest peeling paint. Bit of smudging too with my finger, I don't want anything to look too crisp and defined.
end up from the bottom here I'm using my brown mix again and just a touch of yellow ochre as well. Okay, so now that first layer has dried, I'm coming back in with a much more concentrated mix of my brown for all these lovely shadows and contrasts. So with a quick whoosh with your brush on its side you should pick up a nice dry brush texture which is great for giving the illusion of wood. Next, and now using my number six brush and the same color again for these really deep dark shadow details. Again, you could use some burnt umber or any dark brown. Now this Saunders Waterford paper does have a really interesting surface to it, which really helps to give that wood grain effect, especially when you skim your brush across the surface. So don't be afraid to come in too dark here because it's really going to help to accentuate the light side and give you that strong contrast. So when do I think that I'm beginning to overwork things? I reckon about now. So now that's dried, I'm thinking that the base color to the decking here is just that little bit too bright. So I'm going to knock it back with a very watery mix of my brown color. Nice and watery because you need to preserve the transparency. At last, now it's time to paint the pelicans. I'm starting with my number six brush and starting with the beaks 
using a very watery mix of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. For this one here, his head is just slightly behind his body, so you don't see much of his beak. Beak? No, I think it's a bill, isn't it? A little shadow underneath and a little touch of Payne's Grey at the end. So now for the pelican and I'm starting by completely wetting his whole body and then dropping in some yellow ochre just along the bottom edge here. Next I'm going straight in with some Payne's Grey and I'm making sure I keep that highlight on the right hand side of his head. Make sure you keep this wash nice and light. You can always darken it later if you need to but you can't lighten it. And for all of this I'm using my number six brush. And exactly the same for this fella over here. And by the time you get to this third one, you should be getting the hang of it. And again, it's important that you keep that right hand side unpainted. And when that's totally dry, I'm coming back in with some Payne's Grey, but using some clean water to soften some of the edges. Paint grey again for all these little details.
Okay, I admit it, I forgot to press the record button here, but I simply used a strong value Payne's Grey and dropping in a touch of Burnt Sienna for these dark feather details, and a few small details on the posts. To get these fine tapered ends I just simply lift my brush off the paper with each stroke. Now I'm finishing off by adding some lovely white highlights with some gooey white gouache straight from the tube. And I think we need to just add a few more sparkles of light in the water. There we go, all done, and this one in about three hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and you'll give it a go. Just let those watercolour paints flow, and remember, be a pelican and not a pelican. And of course, I'll see you all again in two weeks time. So take care everyone. And please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment. I do read every single one. Can't always reply to them all. And of course, I'll see you all again soon. Take care.